Yes, folks, as you can see, the fandom's revenge is right behind the Halcyon, and we're letting them have it with both barrels. This is the next phase. This is the next level of immersive storytelling. Everything in the immersive field we've been dreaming of. There's that word again. Immersive. I don't think it means what you think it means. This pile of twice digested dung appears like it could be one of the worst boondoggles in the history of Disney, to the point that I struggle to believe it's actually happening. In this video, we're going to look at even more cringy videos from the Star Wars Hotel, because it's very much like a train wreck. Sure, it's destructive and awful, but I just can't force my eyes away. And then, we're going to point and laugh at the recent tumble in Disney stock prices. I didn't even see it come! Well, Disney and folks like Kathleen Kennedy may not have seen this coming, but those of us with functioning eyeballs and frontal cortexes could see that they weren't going to succeed with things like the cringiest place on earth as their means of making money. To finish this video off, we'll take a look at what this all means for Disney and Star Wars, so buckle up and prepare to laugh derisively. I'll want to hear in the comment section which moment of the upcoming cringe fest was the hardest to watch, though of course I know that just like me you won't look away, because on this pirate ship we don't let up until the target gives up or blows up. Sir, we just lost the main rear deflector shield. One more direct hit on the back quarter and we're done for. Keep firing, assholes! Cringe never stops with the Galactic Star Cruiser, folks. It wouldn't be so bad if there was a reasonable price tag attached to this crap vest, a couple hundred bucks maybe, but for six grand, what the hell do paying customers get? Check out the entrance to this thing. Safe passage to the Halcyon, may the stars make your way. What's happening out there? Shall I describe it to you? Or would you like me to find you a box? You! Why the hell do customers have to crane their necks in order to see out the transport? Seems like a design flaw, but whatever, the cringy part of the entrance into the Halcyon is right here. <laughs> Flash, when I pay six grand to pretend I'm flying off into space, the people waiting there better not look like the receptionists at any old Holiday Inn. Where the hell are the Zabrax, the Gungans, and the Quarren? And okay, if Disney doesn't want to spring for the makeup and alien masks, can we at least come up with some cool, I don't know, capes or pauldrons or something? I might as well check into my local hotel if I wanted to see this kind of garbage. Oh, and speaking of garbage, check out this next clip. My name is Layton Mock. I am the cruise director of the Halcyon. Yay! And this is SK620. Woo! Nice they are my right hand droid and very valuable member of our crew. SK, please monitor the Potter operations and 
Thank you for the time check. Now, you've all been your Sasha, yes? Yes. Wonderful. I am so excited for you to continue to get to know them throughout your journey. They venture far beyond the depths of this ship. But for now, they should Arik, Besh, Crush, and Dorn. When I say passengers, are you with me? I want you to shout out with your station name. Passengers, are you with me? That is the energy I love to hear. And I have to say, there is an energy unlike any other for this voyage. I Who let, who let the lemon head into the room? You are a waste of life and you should give up. What the hell is an HR lady doing on board a Star Wars ship? And why is she giving a little speech? That fake peppiness is enough to make a billy goat puke. And pro tip Disney, if you want your customers to feel immersed in the bullcrap you are offering, don't give little welcome speeches. Let the people get on with their experience. Keep in mind, the folks in this crowd are paying over $2 per minute. But prepare your cringe reflexes, because the HR lady isn't done. Now, I am honored to introduce our captain. She commands the ship with integrity, a steady hand, and the ferocious calm of a sleeping love cat. <laughs> Ooh, sassy! <laughs> People in Star Wars simply don't talk this way. She commands the ship with integrity, a steady hand, and the ferocious calm of a sleeping love cat. <laughs> they aren't bubbly or sassy or woo girls. And if people like that do exist in Star Wars, then it's a damn shame the Death Star got blown up before it destroyed even more planets. That's right, folks. They're forcing me to join Team Empire. If you only knew the power of the dark side. But perhaps the only thing cringier than the HR lady is the Kathleen Kennedy self-insert slash Captain of the Halcyon herself. May I present the Captain of the Halcyon, Captain Keevan. Wake a sleeping loft. <laughs> 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 now, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you all on board here to the house here. We have a very exciting voyage scheduled for you. More on that in a moment, but first, our top priority during spaceflight is the comfort and the well being of our passengers. We do not take this lightly. Thus, we begin every voyage with a muster drill and a roll call. Me bored. Bored! Rawr! Boy, they sure know how to milk your time, don't they? Keep in mind that number I mentioned, a little over two dollars per minute. And at that rate, by now these passengers probably owe them like 20 bucks. But let's look at something with a little more action to it to liven things up. This is the lightsaber battle these suckers, I mean paying customers, were subjected to. Er, rewarded with. No! We stand united! Together! That was so terrible, I think you gave me cancer! Dude, seriously, who the hell wrote these lines? Because I don't think firing him is enough. 
Normally, I'm against public shaming, but in this case it seems necessary so that nobody ever has to suffer through such an atrocity ever again. That right there, that line is a perfect encapsulation of everything wrong with Kathleen Kennedy's Disney Star Wars. It's such a trite, meaningless piece of crap line that only serves to make unthinking troglodytes feel as though they're doing the right thing in supporting Rey. What sort of vacuous, shallow dingleberry must one be to hear that and clap like trained seals? No wonder the people in this crowd paid thousands to be there. They did it because Disney told them to. Haha! <laughs> oh, okay. Let's all be good little automaton droids and believe everything we hear on TV. It's not. I know where this belongs. And I'm taking it to Leia. Don't make me take that holocron from you, Ray. Hold me a child. He's as clumsy as he is stupid. I just had to pause real quick and say, that force push was absolutely pathetic. Kylo Ren sold it with all the gusto of a comatose sloth. Do your job, Lieutenant! Ah, sons are unloyal to the First Order! Destroy them all! No! 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 Hey, please! No! You're not a monster, Lieutenant! You have your Lieutenant, please! Ready! This guy here really bugs me. I think it's because he's supposed to be an actor, and his character in this moment should be full of adrenaline and fury, not grinning like some jackass who thought he's done something his mommy will be proud of. Alright, that's just about as much cringe as I can take for one video. Let's just go ahead and look at something a little bit different here. Remember last month when Disney announced their Disney Plus subscription numbers were up 11 million from the first quarter of fiscal 2022? And the media spin that came out made it look like everything was just hunky-dory for the company. Do you remember that? Yeah, me neither. All of Disney's gains from February 9th, when they made their big announcement that Disney Plus was doing so well, all of those gains are erased. Disney was the worst performing stock of last year, as I've covered many times, and no, that's not an exaggeration, they were literally the worst stock on the Dow Jones. Ow. 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 Well, it seems that Disney's massive fall is continuing on. This article from That Park Place has a reasonable explanation for the large drop we saw the other day. Disney stock drops 3.5% on Disney Plus announcement. Rate leaked? Are investors not keen on the Disney Plus ideas that came out from the company earlier today? Almost immediately after Disney announced they are planning to offer a cheaper, ad-based model for Disney Plus in late 2022, Disney's stock began to drop. As of publication, the stock is down about 3.5%. New website The Street ponders whether or not Disney is making this step to ensure they hit their subscriber goals at any cost, and perhaps that is what is spooking investors.
media and entertainment giant Disney is not taking any chances when it comes to meeting its goal of reaching over 230 million total paid subscribers for its streaming service Disney Plus by the end of fiscal year 2024. We're also curious if the new price point has leaked as our site owner has already heard that the subscription monthly fee will be set at $2.99 for the ad-enabled model, with Disney Plus already at a low $7.99 per month in its current form, is that $7.99 likely to rise this year? <laughs> That smells very stinky for anyone actually subscribed to Disney Plus. Take your pick, either commercials or a ridiculous price for a subpar product. Sounds just like the Star Cruiser, doesn't it? You just don't get it, do you? You don't. Well, the reason I bring this financial stuff up is, as a Star Wars fan who wants to see the franchise return to its former glory, this is actually very good news. Folks like Kathleen Kennedy and Pablo Hidalgo were given extreme latitude under the likes of Bob Iger to do whatever the hell they want with the franchise. Burn it. But the more this company suffers financially, the likelier it is that the newer CEO, Bob Chapek, will remove control of Lucasfilm from the queen of cultural destruction. At the beginning of the year, Bob released a memo that details how employees are expected to treat customers, and he also laid out plans to meet with studio heads like Kennedy on a constant basis. Given the fact that Disney Plus is still operating at a loss, the stock price is tumbling again, and Star Wars is hemorrhaging fans at an alarming rate, I'd guess that the Galactic Star Cruiser being successful is absolutely essential to Kathleen Kennedy continuing to be the leader of Lucasfilm, even if she is only a figurehead, as some rumors claim. But what do you think? Are we winning? Or will crap like the Galactic Star Cruiser keep Disney afloat? And on the subject of the cruiser, don't forget to tell me in the comment section which part was the cringiest to watch. As for my thoughts, I'll simply say this. It's important for folks like us, who despise what's happened to Star Wars, to close our wallets and not give this company a penny. Let the stock tumble. Let the merchandise sit on the shelves. Disney execs are the sort who only respond to economics. So let's keep up the offensive, me hearties. No mercy. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. Thanks for watching, me hearties. If you haven't already, your captain is inviting you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of the crew. Life as a space pirate may not be glamorous, but there's always plenty of booty.